Hello, welcome to another edition of Talking Sports and Fitness with Zeke. I'm Zeke, also known as Mike Zielinski. I'm honored today to have as my guest Tiffany Capilano, who is an outstanding coach at Ole Valley Field Hockey, was a great player there. Uh, there is something about that program that's magical. It's a <laughs> dynasty. Uh, but let's start at the end of last season. That had to be so heart wrenching. You were undefeated, 26 and 0, going to the state championship game. Somehow, you can tell us how, you fell into a four goal hole with 27 minutes left. You stormed back. You were very aggressive. You scored mm -hmm. three goals, but then just came up short and lost four three. Was that the most difficult moment of your coaching or playing career? Um, definitely of my coaching career, you know. Um, being at that level and being in that moment in that game and there was just so much going on and so much emotion going into the game um, it was it was a very special moment for all of the girls all of the players involved all the coaches involved other team included and um, I think kind of getting off to the start that we got off to we weren't used to that it was something that we hadn't really you know we've been down a couple times in postseason um, and we're able to kind of get back into our groove and, and get back. But it almost seemed that every time we started to get our groove, they would come down and score again. And so getting, going into halftime, being down three, nothing, you know, we knew that we had a lot of work to do. And That's we a pretty discussed it. Fight oh, yeah. absolutely. Especially in the game of field hockey. Yeah. Um, Cause scores tend to be in games like that, you know, two to one, one, nothing, you know, three to nothing is almost even considered a blowout. So to be down, by that much, going into halftime, we regrouped. We talked about, you know, not giving up and how this is going to be a fight, but we can do it. We've, you know, we've been able to score many goals all season. So being down three nothing, while it is a deficit, a large deficit, you know, we wanted to make sure that they knew that the coaching staff still believed that they could do it, and we wanted to make sure that coming out of the the halftime talk that they had that belief inside of them. And I think that they really did a great job. Now to start the second half off, we kind of got down again. Um, they came out and scored on us rather quickly, but there was a difference in that one. You know, there was no looking over at the sideline, kind of wondering like, you know, what's what does coach want? You know, what does coach need? It was almost like a determination kind of that you saw that group kind of come together and they really looked to each other. We had strong leadership from uh, our seniors, and uh, I think that they just, they didn't give up. They, ha they had that fight mentality in them, and I was very impressed and very happy for the way that they did show that fight. I was just going to ask you that, mm -hmm. even though it was a very difficult loss, mm -hmm. to say the least, the fact that that combat yeah. said a lot about the character of your players. Oh, absolutely. And in that moment, it's very hard for them to digest. And I, I even think still it's, it's hard for all of us to digest that, you know, we had such an incredible season and, you know, to end it that way with yeah. that loss and to get so close and to have such a fight come out of us um, in that second half, it, it does, in hindsight, it's always 2020. So in looking back on it, I, that is like my proudest moment also as a coach yeah, is yeah. to watch is it, it was to watch them come back you know it, it was difficult talking to them after the game because like I said when it, when it happens and you're in that moment and it's so fresh you, you know words can't describe the pain that I knew that they were feeling and to see them at such a loss was very difficult as a coach but you know in looking back I could not have been more proud of them in that moment. And, and I do believe that as much as, you know, one game doesn't define your whole season, and we talked about that, I do think that that game really speaks volumes for the type of players that they are and the type of kids that they are just in general. Yeah, and your success, yours and your predecessor, Donna Long, mm -hmm. and it's always difficult to follow a legend, and she was an incredible coach. Uh, 459 wins against only 88 losses and 30 ties. But you haven't been too bad yourself. Uh, you're 133 wins, 34 losses, and five ties in seven years with six division championships, two Berks titles, two district three titles. Your teams have reached the three, three PIAA semifinals and last year's PIAA final. And not only have you done that as a 
coach, as a player, you're a 1999 Ole Valley grad, mm -hmm. uh, and you helped Ole win the state championship in 1997, and then later played at the University of Iowa, which is a remarkable program. Mm -hmm. So what is it about, you know, with Donna and yourself, and I know your assistants, uh, uh, Holly and Kelly mm -hmm. and Mel, uh, all are former Ole Valley stars. So what, are you guys like the New York Yankees and New England <laughs> Patriots? I mean, what's going on here? <laughs> Um, I just think it's it's a very special program and I think that Donna Long and Holly McCall who was my assistant who was also Donna's assistant did a very good job of just creating this amazing culture there of you know not only just great field hockey players but you know great people too and something they've cre they created something that everyone wants to be well maybe not everyone but you know people want to be a part of and I think that as you know, young girls going up through our youth program that was started back in the late 80s. Um, up until, you know, these girls get to junior high and whatnot, they grow up wanting, wanting to be a part of it. And I think that all of that can be attributed to the type of culture that they created and the, and the way that Donna and Holly both demanded so much out of, out of their players. And it's just, it's, it is a great feeling to be a part of something like that, and I think that that is why a lot of the players too at Ole find such great, you know, team success, individual success, and then end up going on to continue to play because they just instill this love and passion for the game. You know, it it really parallels in my mind. Uh, we had Doug Doms on uh, prior to the football season. Mm -hmm. I was a football coach. He said basically the same thing that it's the culture and that the kids in the district from early on. Mm -hmm. They're more motivated. They want to be part of this. They're willing to uh, forego summer vacation just so mm -hmm. they train. And uh, it, it's, you know, success begat success, I mm -hmm. guess, you know? Yeah, it takes a lot of dedication, you know, to, to, and a lot of work to put in in order to, to gain the type of success. I mean, these girls are working you know, all year long they're playing, you know, whether it's with a club or they're just training, We, you know, different training opportunities that we offer, but they, they put in the work and... And it shows, I mean, you mm -hmm. have so much talent and the, the bright side is, you know, coming off that very difficult loss, you have 15 of your top 19 players back next year, I understand, yeah. including some real players, uh, class uh, All-State first team freshman, Mm -hmm. who was your leading scorer, Sophia Gladio, am I pronouncing yes, that correctly? Yeah. She had 23 goals and 19 assists. Uh, All-State second team sophomore Madison Klein had 24 mm -hmm. goals and 11 assists. And uh, your All-State first team junior midfielder is already committed to Northwestern. Mm -hmm. uh, but you do lose uh, Sam Buzileski, Buzil 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 mm -hmm. uh, who is going to Wake Forest. Yes. But other than that, God. Yeah. You, you don't have to reload too much. You yeah, know? we lose great leadership. I mean, the, the, the four Senior seniors, captains, yeah. they did an excellent job this year, especially with such a large freshman class coming in, uh, a talented freshman class coming in as they were. The seniors, captains did a very, I mean, I could not have asked for more out of them in the way that they handled different situations that were thrown at them. And um, just they, they did a very good job of holding their, their teammates accountable, leading by example, you know, and making sure that everyone was included. And, you know, so we will definitely miss that. Uh, lineup wise, I mean, every year it, it is different. Yeah. Uh, and I every tell them that every team is different. different. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. So it will be interesting to see, you know, how the players come back, depending on what type of system we play, who fits where. You but change the, your system up much or is it pretty much stable? Um, we did actually implement, uh, play a new system this year. We had played the same one for probably like three or four years and then we decided with the level of play and with many of the girls that uh, play, play for a club local and we play a specific system there. So we kind of implemented that in and they really did a good job with it. So. It was easy. You, uh, I know Donna Long still teaches in the district, mm -hmm. and so you're in touch with her. Mm -hmm. Do you ever go to her for advice? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. It's great to have 
have her as a mentor um, and somebody that you know I can confide in and you know ask for advice and she's she's always there to be a supportive uh, role player for us. She still comes to some of the games, you know, and you know is just as passionate about it. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think one other thing that's very besides culture uh, in a program is the uh, stability of the coaching staff, assistant coaches as mm -hmm. well. And that's something Dom's referenced. And it looks like you guys have had great assistant coaches who stay. Uh, they don't leave for whatever reason mm -hmm. or they don't go and coach somewhere else. Mm -hmm. how, is, how, how, is it because they're part of special? Because some people would love to have the opportunity to be a head coach themselves. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's just all about the dynamics between, you know, jobs, <laughs> outside jobs out of field hockey yeah. and, you know, uh, proximity because all of them live in or, you know, around Holly. Holly's been involved, you know, for a very yeah. long time, you know, and so having her there has also been great because I can go to her in the same ways that, you know, I go to Donna with, you know, okay, so what has been done in the past? How, you know, what do you think? And she's always great to, you know, lend her advice in. And then with having uh, Kelly Williamson and uh, Melanie Brill there, you know, they bring a different flavor as well and, you know, different ideas. And so the dynamic of all of us, because we've been with the program, you know, either as players or as coaches for a long time and then coming back, we kind of, our philosophy is all the same. We all have the same vision for the program. And I think that, you know, having all of that together really creates, helps to create, continue to create that culture that was set by, you know, Donna yeah. and Holly. And, you know, being a part of something like that, I, I think is, is very powerful. And I'm, you know, I can't speak for Kelly and Mel and Holly, but I would assume that that's, you know, yeah. why they stay. You know, and sometimes family uh, commitment, sometimes mm -hmm. make coaches leave or take mm -hmm. sabbaticals. Is it a little harder for women coaches with children? Because, you know, I know we have a marketable society, but mm -hmm. let's face it, mom is still mom and dad's <laughs> dad. Uh, and you have children, right? Yes, I so, have two so boys. Does yeah. that, you get torn sometimes between family time and Absolutely. It, it, time? it definitely is difficult, but um, I have a great support team between my husband who, you know, really make sure that he kind of takes on a little bit more during the season. And then uh, my parents who live in the area as well, they're great. My sisters also help. My younger sister played with me at Ole, and then okay. she also played with me at Iowa. So, you know, she gets it. So having people around me that understand it, they yeah. understand my passion for it, makes it easier. And uh, my oldest is nine, and so he's starting to kind of understand that, you know, what mommy does is is important to her and he's starting to want to be involved in it a little bit more so that's kind of fun. Yeah. Do you have a daughter? No, I don't have a daughter. <laughs> Maybe, is that a good thing? Because there'd be a lot of pressure on that little girl. Uh, oh yeah. my gosh, yeah. yes, absolutely, absolutely. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, obviously I would have loved to have had, yeah. had a daughter, but um, having the two boys and, you know, just having something a little different uh, for them to kind of experience and for them to see their mom do these things I think is important yeah. and to see their mom in such a leadership role is important um, even though they're boys but they still need to see that so and it is nice because I think that I will have you know time to also go see them and you know we live in the district and everything so it just it all kind of fits together yeah you're only Valley born and bred huh? yes Yes. Well, it's a remarkable story. You have Thank a personal you. remarkable story. Uh, much success. You've Thank already you. had a ton of it, but hopefully you finish the state title game next year on a positive note. Yes. It almost, and we're running a little late, but mm -hmm. in, in a way, you know, obviously this was played before the Super Bowl, but it was almost kind of the same thing. The <laughs> Patriots in this horrible hole, and they just finally, you know, they were so mm -hmm. fortunate to finish it off. Yeah. And the only thing is you guys didn't quite do that. No, but, not quite there, but. But, but a lot of similarities. Oh, you know? uh, yeah, absolutely. And yeah. I, I remember I was actually on a flight back from a showcase tournament uh, down in Florida, and I had one of my players with me, and I remember saying to her, you watch, they're going to come back and win it. And yeah. we got off the plane, and... Patriots yeah. won. Well, next year, Ole Valley's going to... Well, don't fall behind so badly, yeah. then that won't be a problem. <laughs> I know, right? That's Stay my coaching, coaching yes. advice from Zeke. But anyway, <laughs> take care, everyone. Until next time. And hey, don't forget to like us on Facebook and watch us on the People Chronicles channel on YouTube. Take care. These community stories are made possible in part by BCTV, Susie Ray Design, 
Queen City Family Restaurant, Lamar Advertising, Heidelberg Family Restaurant, Reading Air, Lions and Hole, Peanut Bar, and Kutztown University.